Good morning, trainees. Welcome to Corbelius Institute Incorporated. I am your trainer, Edwin C. Corbelius Jr. for the qualification of National Certificate Level 2. Before we start, please sign this attendance sheet and affix your signature beside your name. And while you are signing the attendance sheet, let me inform you and discuss to you the following house rules. So first, you need to wear your IDs in proper uniform. This is making sure that you are safe around the training center. Second, our training will be Mondays until Friday and it will start 8 o'clock in the morning and it will end 5 o'clock in the afternoon. And then lastly, you need to always bring your PPE or your personal protective equipment. So are you done signing the attendance sheet? Yes, sir. Okay, so now let us start with the pretest. But first, what is the purpose of this pretest? We will have this pretest in order for us to have a basis of what you already know and what you've already have, and to check your prior knowledge in this qualification. And also, to determine whether you are a kinesthetic, auditory, or visual. Okay, so your, your pretest is consists of 20 items and I will be giving you 15 minutes to finish it. So, you may now start. Okay, so are you done? Yes, sir. Thank you. So now, let us move on to the proper orientation of what competency-based training is. So competency-based training is a, delivery, is, a, is a training delivery mode where trainees are given opportunities to learn in their own pace with the trainer as an integral part of the instruction. So competency-based training focuses on what the learners can actually do. It focuses on the learning outcomes rather than the learning process, meaning the competency-based training is learner-centered. So in order for us to fully understand what competency-based training is, let us study the 10 basic principles of competency-based training. So first, principle number one, the training is based on the curriculum developed from the competency standards. It means to say that all training activities are done towards the attainment of the assessment criteria set by the competency-based curriculum from the competency standard developed by the industry professional and it is promulgated by the TESDA standards. Meaning, training or the learning in this kind of uh, training is based on the curriculum modules. So next, the second principle is learning is competency-based or modular in structure. So in these qualifications, we have 22 competencies and it is divided into three. We have the basic, common, and the core competencies. Wherein the training, you, you should be competent in the first module or competent, competent in competent in the first module before you are going to the other competency meaning learning can be achieved by the modules or the competency and then next we have the principle number three training delivery is individualized and self-paced so in order to cater all the knowledge our session should have a varied a varied of activities by employing different method in our training it is self-paced because your completion of the task will not be based on the performance of others. Your progress is in your own way. So learning is done by the learner at your own pace. So we have the principle number three. Training is based on the work that must be performed. The training, our training is always based on the actual industry practices. By our training provides a simulated work environment, meaning our learning is based on the actual workplace practice. And we have principle number five. <clears throat> training materials are directly related to the competency standards and the curriculum. So in this training, we will going to use competency-based learning materials 
it is conformed to the competency standards. So later on, I will introduce to you what is competency-based learning materials and its parts. So training materials are self-paced and experiential. So when we say self-paced, your completion is based on your own. And when we say experiential, you will experience it in your own. And then we have the principle number six. Assessment of the learners is based on the collection of evidence of the performance of work to the industry or organizational required standard. So our assessment will be used to test whether you are able to perform the job based on the required criteria in the competency standards. So we have our traditional learning method and our competency based or CB. See, com uh, competency-based event training, we're in, in traditional, students are judged against each other. So norm and reference assessment. Well, in competency-based event training, uh, each student is assessed against the required key standards. So in traditional, it focuses on managing instructions. While in competency-based training, it focuses on managing learners. In traditional, it enters, we enters at the same time. While well, in competency-based training, various time throughout the year. And lastly, in traditional, that it is teacher-centered. While well, in competency-based, it is learner-centered. Okay, so you, the trainees or students, are not judged against each other. So next, we have the principle number seven. Training is both on and off job components. So training is done simulated work environment or in the laboratory and or in the actual work environment such as training com production, enterprise-based training, supervised industry training, and OJT or the immersion. So learners, you the learners, are aware of the activities but has to be completed based on the curriculum. So now let us proceed to the principle number eight. So in principle number eight of the competency-based learning, the system allows recognition of prior knowledge or what we call RPN. So the current competencies acquired through the training or inexperience are reorganized before the training to a validation process. By this, you, uh, by this, we the trainer can provide activities that match to the learning level of you our training so upon the enrollment i interview you and i have given you um pre-test by that interview and pre-test i can now know your prior knowledge so workers and the students have a prior knowledge skills recognized toward the standard so now let us proceed to the principle number nine so principle number nine says that the system allows for learners to enter and exit programs at different times and levels and to receive an award for modules or competencies attained at any point or what we call multiple entry. So the trainers do not need to wait for the others to be competent before you can exit either the program or the qualification and you can enter again into another program. You are not allowed to take qualification at the same time. You will be given a chance to receive an achievement of competency. And the last principle, principle number 10, it says here that, up, that the, all the training, approved training programs are nationally accredited. It means to say that all programs are registered to you plus or the Unified Debit Program Registration and Accreditation System. So it assures that the trainer, that the training as a quality certified of the BET program or registration. So what when we say CTPR, this is certificate of the BET program and registration. So um, I hope that you are now aware or learned about our training. So now let us proceed to the rules and responsibilities of the trainer. So what are my rules and responsibilities as your trainer? So first, I will be your teacher. I will instruct you the underpinning knowledge and skills attitude or what we call KSA or knowledge, skills, and attitude. 
And then next, I will be also your facilitator. I will facilitate the learning, not spoon feeding, but scaffold the learning process. And next, I will be your counselor. I will guide and give you pieces of advice to maximize your full potential. And then next, I will be your instructional material developer. I will also I will develop or design learning modules to provide materials aligned with the competency-based curriculum. And the next, I will be your actor. I will get I will going to demonstrate the skills and I will act the performance needed for each competency. And I will be also your curriculum developer. I will. I will be the one who will go in to construct the curriculum or sets of subjects, excuse me, needed in our training. And the next, I will be also our session session planner. I will plan the daily activities and it to be used on the whole training. And then, I will also be your coordinator. I will coordinate and link you with the industry and make channels. And lastly. I will be your negotiator. I will negotiate with the industry for your work's experience. Okay, so if I have my roles and responsibilities, you have also your roles and responsibilities as a trainee. So, here are your roles and responsibilities as my trainees. So, you will you will decide on when ready to demonstrate you have a freedom to choose your demonstration activity and the next work and ask help with each other this is what we call peer teaching you will seek guidance ask and ask for the help of the people around you but you can work independently but with minimum supervision so next number three progress at your own rate. It is not based on the others, but on yourself. And then number four, select on what competency to start. Okay, you have a freedom to choose your preferred competency in this qualification. And then num next, you complete competes against industry. You compete against industry standards. So in here. You need to meet the industry's standard in every demonstration that you are going to do. And then next, evaluate your own performance. Here, I will be giving you a chance to evaluate, evaluate your own demonstration. Okay, next. Request to receive credits on what they know. Okay, here, you will uh, be giving Certificate of Achievement per modules. And then, lastly, moves freely on the workshop. You have the right to use all the equipment in our training center, but with our permission. But be careful, but be careful on using our equipment. Okay, so that is my rules and your rules and responsibilities as a trainer and as a trainer. So now, let us proceed on the uh, flow of our training. So here is the uh, competency-based training delivery. So this is where you are going through. So first, you the trainee will going to enter the program. So as you enter the program, and now you will going to select the competency and you will going to receive instructions. And then after that, Okay, so you will uh, review learning package, you will view multimedia materials, you will use manuals, observe demonstrations, practice skills and workshop, and you will receive assistance and advice. And then after that, you will go into demonstrate, you will go into attempt the task, you will go into demonstrate, hands-on demonstration. And then after that, I am the trainer, your trainer, I will go into observe you. And then next... I will, uh, you the trainee, you will rate your own performance. And then after that, I will go in also to rate your performance. And if, okay, if you satisfactory completed 
our competencies, okay, you will going back on selecting competency and receiving instruction. If you satisfactory, complete it. And if you have completed all the competency, you are now going to undergo the national assessment. And then after that, you will now going to exit the program. And if you have enough competencies that have been achieved, you can now exit our program. But if not, you will going back on this process. Okay, so that is the competency-based training delivery or our flow, the flow of our training. Okay, so next, this is our workshop. Okay, so, okay, so here, I know, so as you can see, this is the uh, layout of our training center. So this is our contextual learning area. So this contextual learning area and learning resource area, here you can find books that serves as your reference for your researches. And here, here is our practical work area. This is where we conduct, conduct institutional assessment. And here, here is our quality control area. This is where the finished products generated from the training scrutinize. And then next, here is our trainees, trainers resource area. So this is where we, the trainers, made our lessons. And lastly, this is our support service area. This is where the tools and equipment are located with that needs to appear. Okay, so now that is the um, orientation of the competency of the competency-based training. So now, before we proceed to our demonstration, let me just um, brief, let, give you a briefing about the qualification that you have chosen. So you, the, you have chose Kukiri National Certificate Level 2. So the Kukiri, cert, the Kukiri National Certificate Level 2 qualification consists of competencies that a person must achieve to clean kitchen areas, prepare hot, cold meals, and desserts for guests in various food and beverage services or facilities. So here, we have our competencies, and it is divided into three. We have our basic, common, and the core competencies. We're in, you have 18 hours in basic competencies. You have also 18 hours in the common competencies. And lastly, you have 280 hours in our core competencies. And then next, here is our competency-based learning modules. So CBLM or our competency-based learning material, I should, say, I should say, it is simply a well-designed and carefully developed learning materials that will give you the trainees detailed instructions to guide you throughout our learning. So, the parts of the competency-based materials, we have our front page. We have also our trainees guide on how to use the CBLM. We have also the list of our competencies. Here, we have also our module content. We have our learning outcome summary our learning experiences and our different instruction sheets of competency-based learning materials. We have our information sheets, we have our task sheets, we have our operational, we have our job, we have our performance criteria checklist, and then next, here are the reasons why we use competency-based learning materials. So first, competency -based in, in competency-based learning materials, learning is self-based. And the next, learning is student-centered. 
it's it developed learning mastery it there is also immediate feedback on the achievement of the learning and lastly the training in the competency based learning material is well planned and the next the our evaluation process different evaluation process we have written test we have computer best based assessment we have our performance assessment we have our training activity matrix we have our progress achievement charts and we have also our trainees record book okay so that is the end of our orientation i hope you understand uh, the training that we will go through okay so welcome again train trainees so as i said we are now going to our demonstration. So, you have your chosen qualification is Cooking National Certificate Level 2. So, here, the unit of competencies that we are going to study is the Clean and Maintain Kitchen Princess, wherein I will going to teach you the proper hand dishwashing. So, first, here are our tools and equipment. We have our basin, our deeper pitcher, we have our dishwashing liquid, our sponge, our rock, our rug, and our dishes. And then our personal protective equipment, we will going to use apron only. But you can use rubber gloves if you have your skin disease or you have your dry skin. So now, let us move on to the proper instructions of what are we going to do. So first, we need to wear rubber gloves so it is optional as i said you can use this if you have your dry skin or your skin problem and then wear your aprons too and then next the first thing that we are going to do is to scrape all the large pieces of food on the dishes and place it in the compost pit or garbage bin And then next, stack the dishes in proper order. Uh, first, our glassware. And then next, our silverware. Our chinaware. And our utensils. Stack them from the right of the sink so that the work progress will be from the right to the left. And then next, fill okay fill the sink or basin with water and add considerable amount of detergent detergent and then next Wash the lightest soiled item first. Consider, I start with the glasses. And then next, our silverware. And then, after that, we will going to wash our plates or our serving bowls or serving dishes. And then, next, wash our uh, pots, pans, or our kitchen utensils last. Soak them first and wash thoroughly. And then after that, rinse it with water.
Rinse it, rinse it with water and lay our dishes on a rack to air dry. There should be no visible matter or no greasy feel. Run hand over the dishes and ensure that they are thoroughly clean. And lastly, arrange the sponge and allow to dry. And then last, swipe down the sink and your tools. Okay, so this is now how we are going to wash our dishes. Okay, so now let us proceed to our return demo. Okay, so it, it's now a chance. Okay, so now that is the end of our training. Thank you.